What's up, everyone? Good evening and welcome to the Outlaw Nation show here, coming to you live from Brentwood here in California. We're up here. Uh, the Lady Outlaw and I are hanging out because she's got to get to work and do stuff over the last few days where she works. Not going to tell you where she works. That's part of our deal. But I came up to keep her company over the next three days. So we're doing the Outlaw Nation show from a new room, from a new setup. If it's a bit too bright, let me know. I can adjust the light a little bit. But this is my life right now. So I see so many already. How many people are watching? We've got like 80 people in here waiting to go, waiting to watch 50 likes already. Keep hitting that like button. Give it some love. we got a lot of things to talk about tonight. That's for damn sure. You saw my video talking about my participation in the Schmodown, what my future is in the Schmodown. I'll get to that in just a little bit. But first, I'll remind you all to please hit a like on this video. And if you're watching it later, leave a comment. And if you haven't subscribed to the fucking channel, why haven't you subscribed to the channel? Subscribe to it and hit the bell button so you see when we're dropping all the great content we got here on the Outlaw Nation channel. You're seeing the reactions. You're seeing the reviews. You're seeing the live shows. You're seeing the Geek Buddies. You're seeing we're back with game time. Strong style, go, still going strong with that joke. That joke of a player, Aaron Turner, who got lucky on the FCL screw job that him and his buddies did down there and getting together and giving him the answers ahead of time was ridiculous. It was ridiculous what I had to endure in that FCL match. But I see him already in the chat kissing his own ass. That's such a shame. You hate to see it. You hate to see a player who is 0-75 trying to kiss his own ass off an exhibition uh, win that he got That was a bit, that's tainted. Very, very tainted. That's for sure. Look at all you fools in the live chat. Thank you so much. For hanging out with me tonight. I appreciate it. The Outlaw is hosting tonight, just so we're clear. The Outlaw John Roca is hosting tonight. Not John Roca, sweet, cuddly, teddy bear John Roca hosting. No, no, no. It's the Outlaw John Roca hosting tonight. So get ready for two hours of goodness. You're welcome. You don't have to thank me. I'm telling you ahead of time. You're welcome. Save your breath. You're going to need it on your die bed, on your dying bed. All right, here we go. What's, what's going on here? Uh, we got so many people. Hanging out with us tonight. Don't forget the stream labs and the super chats are open. You got something you want me to talk about? Send it in as a stream lab. You see the address? Don't be a cheap ass. Send some money in. Send some support in. If you want to do some super chats, send that in as well. But you YouTube takes 50% of that shit. So send in the stream lab. That's a better way to go about it. I got Sean hanging out in the back, co -produ or producing with me, making sure everything's cool. So, and don't be an a-hole in here. If you're an a-hole in here, we'll block you damn quick. That's for sure. Over 115 of y'all hanging out with me. I appreciate it madly. Thank you very much. Again, make sure you hit that like button. We're going to get into my thoughts on what's going on. I'm going to give you my 411 on what I'm doing in the Schmodown tonight. I've had just about enough of the crap from this year, and I got some things I got to say about it, and I'm doing it here live on the Outlaw Nation show. So I appreciate you joining me. Later on, maybe we'll get into that X-Men ridiculousness. I mean, it's called We Got This Covered, but they make up stories to cover. So it seems to be confusing to me what you're covering if you're making up the stories to cover. But that's a story for later on today. And also the Emmys. We're getting to the Emmys. So many people complaining about the Emmys. Emmys so white. Emmys this or that. What are you complaining about with the Emmys so white? Deserved the deserved winners won. A lot of controversy around that. We're going to talk about that as well. And apparently, my producer, Sean Barto sent this in ahead of time. Apparently, there's a Super Mario Brothers casting situation that everybody on the internet is already making jokes about. People going after Chris Pratt. Apparently, he's part of this casting decision. I don't know anything about it. You know, it's it's always so funny here. Oh, look, Kermit the Pog is in here with, uh, with like no followers coming in, feeling himself. Hey, Kermit, if you had some real nuts, why don't you put a picture of your face on there so everybody knows what a little bitch you are? Go ahead, Kermit, do it. Get up in there. Have some nuts. I'm out here live. You can see my face. Where's your face, Kermit? Where the fuck is your face? Huh? Yeah, nowhere. Exactly. Good to see everybody here. Yeah, I've got the Barbarian rolling with us. Thank you very much, Barbarian. I appreciate it. Jake Berlin's. I've seen Jake Berlin in forever. What's up, Jake? Good to see you hanging out with us tonight as well also we got ourselves cheryl is rolling around in here hey outlaw nation hashtag that's correct that's correct maria's in here as well maria you ready maria 
You ready? This is not safe for work, Maria. Are you ready, Maria? I don't want to give you a hard. Are you ready, Maria? All right, because I'm coming hard. Just, just so we're clear about what's happening here tonight. Tim Sim already donated. Tim said, said, sending this ahead of what announcement and comments you have regarding the Schmodown. But what are your thoughts on Marisol McKee becoming the first woman to win the singles championship and be the fourth person of color to win the singles title? Um, Mike Shea also sent in and says, fuck YouTube and their BS. Respect. I appreciate that, Mike Shea. Thank you very much. Um, all right. I'm going to tell you this right now, right off the bat. Uh, Tim Sim, Marisol McKee deserves so much credit absolutely for being a, a champion. I was one of those people. If you go back and see the old Schmodown rundown shows that I used to host with that clown Bateman, I said right there, you know, and I was the star of the show, obviously Bateman. You see now Bateman putting himself on all the thumbnails. Love me, love me, love me. Cut it out, Ben. Grow some nuts. Grow some self-esteem for the love of God. Grow some backbone for God's sakes. Oh, don't make no back jokes, I guess. But listen, this situation here with Marisol McKee, I couldn't be happier. All bullshit aside, I couldn't be happier. A, finally, we've had a woman come along who's broken the ceiling. We've had so many worthy contenders in the past. Rachel Cushing, Clark Wolf, so many great women who have tried to win that singles title and haven't been able to break through. To have Marisol McKee do it against Ethan Irwin, who is playing at the top of his game, deserves all kinds of credit and all kinds of love. And for me personally, as someone who is the first person of color to win the singles title, the first person of color to do any have any any legacy in this uh, uh, in this schmodown business, the the person who built this business, the schmodown business, the outlaw. I was proud as hell that now on the dais I will be standing next to forever another person of color as a singles champion. And it is Marisol McKee, and you can ask the queen. Look, the queen and I we go way back. The Queen and I have had our battles and our wars in the Schmodown, not outside, but certainly in the Schmodown. And I texted her that night when I heard the news and gave Marisol McKee all her flowers and all her love, and she deserves it. I see you're already talking shit about the Finstock Exchange. That's natural. You want to go after the beasts in the wilderness, in the jungle, so naturally she'll go after it. And she's crowing about, well, aren't they supposed to have belts? Listen here, Marisol, you're a new champ. Congratulations. Maybe you don't know how it works. It's who's got the belt at the end of the year that matters. And there's still a tournament to be had. And there's still a defense for you to be had. And certainly, as we've seen all year, defending the singles belt has not been an easy thing to do. Dan, Ethan, Adam Collins uh, uh, have all lost the belt already. So you're next in line, Marisol McKee. So all your flowers, but don't be poking the bear in the Finstock Exchange cage. That's a wrong move, especially when we've got some heavy hitters in the tournament. And you're lucky. You're lucky I didn't get in the tournament. I had to mow down everybody and come for that belt. Two people of color going at it for the singles title would be fantastic. So all love, all love to uh, Marisol McKee for what she did. Congratulations. You deserve it. I said it on the Schmodown Rundown years ago that you are someone to watch. And so I'm not surprised at all that you won. And you did it credibly. You know, some people crow about a belt that they won once against a champion that was debilitated by stuff that was going on outside in his life and he wasn't 100% focused for the match. You beat an Ethan Irwin at the top of his game, just like I beat Dan Merle at the top of his game undefeated. I took the belt. And there's a special kind of um, accomplishment that you feel when you beat a champion at the top of their game. So Marisol McKee, all love to you, all the flowers to you. Keep it warm. Keep that belt warm because you never know who's coming for you. That's for God damn sure. Just so we're clear on all of that. Oh, is Aaron Turner still in here? Uh, the FCL screw job king. Is he still rolling around here making us comments? Francisco Lopez. Hey, send in your stream labs and super chats. What's going on? 15 bucks. I've been on for 15 minutes and you're giving me 15 bucks. Come on, people. Send in your love and send in your support here as we're doing this thing. Francisco Lopez says, hey, John, the outlaw Roca. That's right. Sorry, I can't watch it live. That's your loss. But whatever is your future is with the Schmodown, I hope you're happy with the decision you made. Also, I have a question. Are you and the Geek Buddies doing spoiler reviews for Doom Patrol? You know what, Francisco? This is the Outlaw Nation, not Geek Buddies. So focus on what we're talking about here. But let me tell you, I don't know if we're doing Doom Patrol reviews. We'll see. I haven't even watched season two. So let me catch up. I know season three dropped today. So let me watch some season three 
I want to as well, and maybe we'll make a decision next week. And look, I've already started talking, at least the, the John Roke has already started talking to the Geek Buddies about what to do with the future of the Geek Buddies. So there might be some announcements coming soon on that front as well. John Post says, Roke, a huge fan. You think the Washington football team, what's he say here? I want to put it on the screen because the man put some money in. You think the Washington football team can get the W this weekend? I don't know. It's tough. We're uh, we're playing in Buffalo. Josh Allen blanked, and the Bills blanked the Dolphins 35-0. It was a hell of a – or 35 nothing. I guess we're on American shores. 35 nothing. It was a hell of a game. They knocked out Tua. They had to play Jacoby Brissett, who scares nobody in the NFL. They took care of business. We had a hell of a, a, a game against the Giants. Uh, we beat them. We beat the crap out of Daniel Jones. We whipped that joke of a quarterback. He was running around all over the place, and he couldn't put the ball in the hands of receivers that could catch him. They kept dropping him all over the field. And then his own buddies pull a holding penalty and then jump into an infraction, which means Dustin Hopkins kicks that field goal, and we win. So Giants going 0-16. You heard it here first. They're not even making the they're not they're, they might be kicked out of the league. And that's John Mara's uh, uh punishment for passing the new no taunting rules that everybody hates. That you get Sean, take that in the chin. That is your owner passing that crap on the competition committee. When is taunting flexing your muscles? You work hard in the gym. There's nothing wrong with showing your guns when you pull a good play. Apparently, that's 15 yards. Talk about the no fun league. What a joke. John Mara, resign. Resign as the owner of the Giants. Sell it to someone who's actually played. You're a white old country club owner. You got no fucking clue what it's like to be a player in this league and understand what taunting is. This is a predominantly black league, and they and black people love to enjoy good things when they get it. Good things. They they love to talk smack. They love to do all that thing. I grew up, uh, you know, playing and 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 understanding that that's part of the game. John Mara, why don't you come on down and take a few hits? Maybe you'll understand what it's like to accomplish something really cool on the field. So let's put it out there already. All right, 0-17. Sorry, j Dog. I appreciate you correcting me. 0-17, that's what the Giants are going to go. 0-17. They're going to lose the Cowboys twice. They're going to lose to us again in New York. Daniel Jones will probably be uh, out of the, uh, the, uh, the season uh, by the fourth or fifth game. I predict it now. And who knows what's going to happen to Saquon Barkley. God help you. Get traded, Saquon. Find a way to get traded. You deserve to get traded. You don't deserve to be on a team like that for the love of God. All right, what else we got here? Um, Alan Smithy, Yo Roka, what is up? Take my money. Thank you, Alan. I appreciate it. The Outlaw Nation Patreon Trivia League is worth every penny. I love it. Make sure to watch all of my matches. I always win. Well, is that true? Except for those two times I didn't. Anyway, yeah. yippee ki Outlaw. Thank you, Alan Smithy. I appreciate that. Very, very much. That's right. The Outlaw Nation Patreon has an Outlaw Nation Trivia League. You can join the Patreon at patreon.com slash John Roca, and you can see the multiple tiers. I think it's $10 and above for three months. Then you qualify to play in the league. We got singles. We got teams. But it's all behind the paywall, and and it's a fun-ass league. No drama, no toxicity, no bullshit, no terrible calls on the desk. But legitimate games, legitimate people doing good things, playing trivia, having a lot of fun with no bias by some of the judges on the desk because they got personal animus with some of the members on a faction or something like that. None of that happens in the Outlaw Nation Trivia League. So if you want to be part of that, go and join the Patreon and have some fun with it. Plus, you get two hangouts a week with me on the Discord, on camera, on Zoom. If you go at the $10 and above level, $5 and above, you get the Discord hangout every Tuesday night. Uh, and uh, five dollars and ten dollars and above is when you get the on camera hangout, which is Wednesday nights or Friday nights, depending on screenings and what have you. So it's a pretty cool league, absolutely. Yeah, and Royko, give him some love, give him some look at this guy, Starfire Triple X goes, What was Roka Schmoda news? You son of a you should have been here from the beginning, you son of a bitch. But anyway, you're lucky that I haven't even revealed the news yet. So sit back and relax, Triple X. You know what? Take a break, take a break, you know, put some clothes back on. Stop doing that scene and take a break, and I'll get you the news in just a second. That's for damn sure. Uh, let's see. Brother Lomas is in the chat as well. Uh, all this kind of stuff, you know, we're going, we're going, we're going into it. That's for damn sure. All right, let's get to 150 likes. Thank you, Sean. Absolutely. Let's get to 150 likes. Let's go, Outlaw Nation. Get it to 150 likes. Where are we at right now? How many likes we got so far? 112. Come on, people. 100, 200 of you watching and only got 115 likes. Let's get it up there to 150 likes. 
Let's go. Yeah, you come for the fireworks. Absolutely. That's what we're talking about. Uh, we're having some fun. That's right, Dom. Relax while you – yeah, Dom. You know, if someone relaxed while they yelled at you, maybe you wouldn't be a Cleveland Browns fan. You'd have some some self-respect and not be a Cleveland Browns fan. You'd have picked a winning team to support instead of that joke by the lake. What do they call that? What do they call that? The Jake joke by the lake or whatever it is? I forget what they call that. Anyway. All right, where are we at right now? Are we let's get to a certain let's get to a certain amount, and I'll get there. All right, where are we at right now? Let me look at this thing. If we get to a hundred bucks, I'll drop the news here earlier than expected. All right, we're almost there. We're fifty five bucks away from a hundred dollars. Come on, somebody donate here, get us to a hundred, and we'll start this process. Uh, Canada Rock sent in some money. He said Alan Smith he can dream all he wants, but there is only one champ right now, and it ain't him. Yeah, well, it ain't you either. Yeah, I know the champ. I get that you're the champ in the Alan, but you ain't the champ in the Schmodown. That's what matters. That's what we're talking about. That's right. Mistake by the lake. That's the correct answer. All right. What's up, Eric Frederick? Good to see you in here. Yeah, Eric talking all the mess, always. Uh, what's up, Lewis Cox? Good to see you in here as well. Uh, let's see who else we got. Is Sochar 1999. What's up, Sochar? What's the minimum tier? It's 10 bucks. 10 bucks a month. That's all. That's all. And you get to be a part of it. And there's some great questions, some good matches, some fun stuff happening. But it's behind the paywall. It's not on camera. It's its own thing. It's a lot of fun. They came up with it organically. I support it. I'm proud of it. That's some good stuff uh, for sure. Hold on. Uh, let's see here. All right. Uh, come on. Hit that like button and send in some stuff here. Get us over $100 and we'll jump into it. Haskell420. What's up, Haskell? Good evening, Outlaw. Good to have you hosting. Chance is a multi-time -team, teams champ like yourself and a hell of a singles player and an ID. But please... A few actually think if Chance wins the singles belt and defends it, he's on Rushmore and better than you. That's ridiculous, okay? First of all, Chance is walking on the mountain that I built. He is walking on everything that I built, all right? He should be on his knees thanking me for building this platform, for allowing him to get out of his mom's basement or that studio apartment he lives in and be able to showcase himself correctly and be able to get some love from the fans. If it wasn't for me and, and me building the Schmodown, the outlaw building the Schmodown, this guy would still be doing shows for 15 people on YouTube, for God's sakes. He wouldn't have any kind of following like he does now. Now, did he take the opportunity? Has he run with the ball? Yes, absolutely. But has he changed the game? Has he built the game? No, he hasn't. I did that. Everything else is just thank you. You should thank me. You should thank me for allowing you to have a piece of the pie. That's what it should be with the outlaw, for God's sakes. So give me a break. Yeah, nothing comes, nobody comes close to me except for maybe Dan Merle, my former partner. Maybe he comes close to what the outlaw is and what I built for the Schmodown, for goddamn sure. Winning trivia matches without personality, without character, without real kind of oomph. That isn't what brought people into this league. I brought people into this league. The outlaw brought people in this league, and you know that for damn sure. Let's see here. Yeah, it's camo, Dom. Yeah, people that serve this country, they wear camouflage. I served my country for eight years. That's what camouflage is for. All right, Justin Toner in here as well. Says, hey, outlaw, hey, outlaw looking forward to your announcement. Just wanted to let you know AEW Dynamite is going to be in Rochester, New York next week, and I got my ticket to go see the show live. So excited. Can't wait to talk about it with you and the nation. Hashtag strong style. Absolutely. Appreciate that, Justin. Yeah, AEW had the Grand Slam, I think, last night. Uh, one of our top 10 listeners, Chris Lemke, was there, said he had a great time. Uh, Ruby Soho taking on Dr. Britt Baker. You had Kenny Omega taking on Brian Danielson, hashtag Daniel Bryan. And it was a lot of fun, that's for damn sure. All right, we're getting closer, people. We're about 40 bucks away. So somebody donate 40 bucks, get us to that 100 mark, and I'll start talking and I'll start dropping my announcement for sure. Thank you, Mavis the Reaper, saying you are freaking amazing, outlaw. You goddamn right I am. You goddamn right I am. You goddamn right I am. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Mike is up there. Yeah, Kalinowski is up there. Kalinowski is definitely up there. Of course, he's come close or he's had his opportunities to be a number one contender to fight for the belt, but he's never quite gotten there. But there's no shade on what he's, what he's been able to accomplish in the Schmodown, one of the best characters in the Schmodown, one of the best legacies in the Schmodown for sure. So no no, uh, no shade on Mike Kalinowski and what he's accomplished. You know, he hasn't texted me since June of this year. He texted me tonight when he saw my tweet, when he saw Harloff's response. 
We'll get to Christian Harloff in a little bit. When he saw Harloff's response, he was all like, what, what happened? What's going on? What's the thing? What's the deal? Well, I didn't answer him because I'm doing a live show. Why am I going to give you the milk? Come and hang out with the cow, son. You got to hang out. Wait, I'm not a cow. I'm just saying, come and hang out and you'll get the milk. That's what I'm trying to get at. Anyway. Uh, all right. Let's see what else we got here. Who else has been sending in some stuff here that I haven't gotten to yet? Come on, people. Send it in. Oh, 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 Sean Barreto. Oh, Gabagool Gurgin. Oh, Sean Barreto. There you go. That's right. That's right. Don't let anyone disrespect you, Sean. There you go. There you go. That's right. Good stuff. Thank you very much. All right. Sean Barreto's put it on the table. We've crossed that $100 mark. Maybe the Reaper says, one of my favorite Schmodown chants of all time. On Rushmore for sure with Kalinowski. No, 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 no. Kalinowski is with me. I am on the, the Schmodown. I am on the uh, Mount Schmodown, and Kalinowski is with me, but I am on the Schmodown. Honestly, I should be the first name on the Schmodown. The outlaw should be first. Without me, there's no characters. I did it, and I won titles. That's the difference. Characters are fun. If you can't win titles, it's cute. That's it. You know, you're a side character. You're not a lead. That's for damn sure. Uh, maybe, maybe, I meant he's with you. My bad, Outlaw. That's right, Maven. I appreciate you correcting yourself. That's the correct thing to do. When you've been called out by the Outlaw, take your butt, your verbal butt whooping and change what you said. That's a smart thing to do, Maven. I appreciate that. Respect to you. Uh, all right, let's see here. Uh, let, let's, let's get it going. All right, let's make this announcement. Thank you, Sean, for pushing us over the $100 mark. Uh, we'll be right back right after the, no, I'm just joking. I'm just joking. That's what they do on TV shows. That's what they do on TV shows. I'm not going to do that to you. There's no cliffhanger. There's no to be continued here. Uh, shout out to coffee bean. They've come up with this new iced tea called Pacific iced tea. I can't even tell you how good this iced tea is. Go and get it. It's three bucks. Enjoy yourself. Get the massive size. You know, I don't drink Coke, uh, that much. I drink Diet Coke, but I don't drink Coke that much. And I don't drink water, but iced tea helps me out a lot. Unrelated note here from Xenocore One is you have a DD214. What do you think of the Space Force uniforms? Ready to join the Battlestar Galactica? I know I am. Listen, anything that's connected to that fool that was in the White House for the last four years, I don't want anything to do with. I like the outfits. I like the people who are making fun of the outfits. I respect that. But the Space Force, I don't know. What, what are we spending money on that nonsense for? It makes no sense at all. We got people starving. We got people homeless. We got people who are suffering in our country because of COVID. We're going to go put up a space force. The hell is wrong with us, man? It makes no sense at all. So, all right. Uh, that's right. That's my announcement. Shout out to Coffee Bean. That's right. That's the, Thanks for joining me. That was my announcement. I appreciate it. Um, all right. Let's get to it. Let's talk about it. There's been a lot of speculation of what my announcement's going to be. You know, some of you haven't seen me play in quite some time. I've been uh, told about the Reddit boards. People are asking, you know, where's the outlaw? Where did he go? Uh, you know, and I've been, uh, what's he going to do? What's his next step? Why haven't we seen him play? Why did he step aside in the turn? You know, it was funny to me to listen to some of these people who've never played a second of the game in their lives questioning my manhood, wait, questioning my humanhood and being like, why is he a quitter? Why is he quitting? First of all, I don't have to full prove a goddamn thing to you. Not a goddamn thing. I have been through the wars with the greats in this league, okay? I didn't step out of the singles tournament. I was tricked out of the singles tournament. And I'll tell you about it in just a little bit. I think you know who the person is that convinced me to step out of the tournament and he messed with the outlaw's money. You don't mess with the outlaw's money. That's for goddamn sure. But listen, there's been a lot of speculation about what I'm going to say tonight, what I'm going to talk about, what my future is going to be. And, and you know what? I've been thinking a lot. You know, this time off from playing matches, this time off from not being involved in these tournaments, this time off kind of focusing on my channel, focusing on myself, you know, taking long walks, taking my hikes, climbing the biggest mountains in San Diego like nobody's business. When, I've had, when I'm having all that time to myself, I've been thinking about my legacy. I've been thinking about what the outlaw has accomplished in the Schmodown, what he's built in the Schmodown, what he's created in the Schmodown. And I've been thinking about what I'm going to do and what I'm going to say. You know, it took me a long time to come to this moment. And I did it on my own. You know, Christian Harloff was calling me and texting me. I ignored him. I ignored him. 
I didn't want any noise to mess with my own mind, to mess with my own thoughts, my own feelings about this. The Finstock Exchange people, I love them to death. Very proud to be a part of that faction. Very proud to lead, co-lead that faction with the other veterans of this game. Very proud to see us doing our thing. Hey, remember when two managers thought it'd be funny to jump on stereo and make fun of our drafts? Where are those two managers' teams now? Oh, all the way down there. Remember when that clown thought it'd be funny for him to jump on stereo? What's his record now? What's his record now? That's the game. That's the truth. Don't mess with the dossier. They tried to make jokes of the dossier, but here we are. We've been in contention for that faction title all year because of that draft, because of the way we've prepared these players, and they've come out like gangbusters. They've come out and played their hearts out. Craig Grain, the, the Barbarian's been fantastic at getting these guys ready. Finstock managing, uh, uh, even Taylor Robinson stepping in and managing. She's been fantastic. It's been great to see Moose. It's been great to see the ascension of Khan. Griffin Newman coming in and shocking the world. So many people, the Rager Rick Raddus, uh, uh, Brother Loma, so many of the members of the Finstock Exchange. JT, of course, my partner, my partner, mi hermano, mi hermano, riding side by side. This year, uh, uh, you know, through all the victories, through all the tough losses, and through all the bullshit, we have done our job and proved our point and uh, become a fantastic team together as, uh, as 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 a team. JT and I, as two Latinos, two the first. I think if I'm not wrong, someone can correct me. The first team to have two people of color on it in the Shmoda. Once again, breaking new ground. The outlaw. Once again, breaking new ground in this league and we were so close we're one frozen two question away from possibly going into sudden death and winning this da that damn match and getting into a position to possibly buy for the tag team titles we were so close and we played it really well mount rushmore hell effing yes so as i've done all this thinking as i've done all this walking and as i've had some time now to sit with the lady outlaw and Talk about my career. Talk about my legacy. Talk about my future. Seven seasons I've given this league of my blood, sweat, and tears. We're in season eight. Seven seasons. I came in like gangbusters. Do you remember? Do you remember the picture from above? The hat? You couldn't see the eyes. The NWO shirt. And it said the outlaw is coming. From that first conversation with Christian Harloff, from that first conversation with him, I have built the outlaw. I have gone to the mountaintop four separate times. I've beaten the greats. Dan Merle, undefeated. William Bibiani, when he was the beast. The Schmoes, no, were undefeated. And we beat them twice with top 10. Dan Merle played his ass off in that free-for-all, got us a shot at the title, and we took care of business in Orlando. And corruption was shaken in their boots in Orlando when they heard the cheers for the founding fathers. Four times been to the mountaintop and beaten the best, the greats. That's what makes me the outlaw. And along the way, beaten some fantastic teams and some fantastic players. Mark Andreco, who was a team's champion twice over. I beat JTE, who was my partner, but he was a tag team champion how many times over? I beat Dan Merle in teams and in singles. I beat Ben Bateman in teams and in singles. Beating Kalinowski in teams and in singles. This is the legacy of the outlaw. Beating team top that, team Rotten Tomatoes. Schmoes no twice, as I said. All the greats. All the greats who stuck around, not all the greats who quit before they could defend the belt. All the greats who stuck around. <sighs> There's been a lot of conversations about what I'm going to do. And it's one of the hardest things 
I've ever had to do. Because I've enjoyed every second that I've played. Have I enjoyed the bullshit sometimes, the bad decisions, the questionable judgments that have gone against me? No. But have I enjoyed playing every second for you, the fans? Hell yes. Hell yeah, as a great man once said. I've enjoyed every second, every season, every moment, every match. No matter what the drama is around the match, just being able to play has meant so much to me. You guys know how much I've given of my blood, sweat, and tears, and tears, and literal tears to this league. You guys know how I've crawled over barbed wire and broken glass to be in positions to possibly win belts or to win belts. But after seven seasons, I have to announce tonight that I am going to retire. That's right. The outlaw is retiring. I'm stepping back from this game. I've given it so I've given it so much of myself. And I've come to the crossroads in my life where it's time to retire. And to step back from the game a little bit. And focus on other things. And I want to thank all of you for supporting the outlaw, for being with the outlaw, for picking me up when I was down, for sending me so many messages and words of support, for living and dying with every one of my matches. I want to thank the Outlaw Nation because that's the, whether you're part of the Patreon or not, you are part of the Outlaw Nation if you cheer for the Outlaw, if you respect the Outlaw, if you love the Outlaw. Yeah, if you respect what I've done in this league, the accomplishments, you are part of the Outlaw Nation. And I want to thank you for supporting me for so long. Get a lot of people sending stuff in now. So I want to thank you all so much as I step back from the game. But I do want to say I am going to decide when I retire. Okay? No one is taking me out in the back like an old dog and shooting me in the head. I'm going to decide when I retire. And I'm not going to retire after being talked out of participating in this year's singles tournament. And I'll tell you who talked me out of that. Christian Harloff. Christian Harloff, we've been friends for a long time, over 20 years. People know back to Florida State, all the way through L.A. and to now, through all this process. They know I give you respect for opening the door for this career that I have now, but I took the ball and I ran with it. You put me on the team, but I was the star player on the team. And I'm not going to retire on your terms. By talking me out of being in that singles tournament and making way for another player, I lost out on money. You mess with the outlaw's money. You messed with the outlaw's legacy. I could have had another run to the title. 
but you tricked me, you talked me out of it, you used that forked tongue of yours, and you convinced me not to be a part of the singles tournament. And so people think I'm going to go out on a loss to that clown Aaron Turner in the FCL or that even bigger clown Ben Bateman who got lucky. Oh, sorry, I fucked up your flight plans, Ben. <laughs> sorry. But I'm not going out like that. I'm going out my way. And I've earned that after seven seasons of giving you everything I got, Harloff. So this is what I say. No, 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 no. This is what I demand. I am going out in spectacular fashion. You understand me? Are you listening to me? I saw you retweet my tweet or comment. Oh, we should have talked about it ahead of time. We're talking about it now. No longer is the outlaw going to be under your control. No longer is the outlaw waiting on Christian Harloff to dictate the terms of a match. No, no. This time, I'm telling you my terms. And I'm going out. In spectacular fashion, baby. That's what I'm telling you. So the outlaw is going to retire. But I'm retiring my way. All right, we built this thing. And really, I built this thing. Because you had ideas in the clouds. I put them on the ground and built them from the ground up. This schmodown thing of ours the Schmodown Cosa Nostra, for those who understand. That's what we did. So I say, I demand to go out with one last match at Schmodown Spectacular. And I don't care what you got to do, Harloff. I don't care whose ass you got to kiss. I don't care who you got to bump off the card. And I don't care what you got to crawl through to make it happen, but you're going to make it happen. You're going to give me my match. And I don't care who you line up, but you better line up someone good. And you give me my match, Harloff. I demand it. And not only do I demand it, I know everybody watching and listening demands it as well. So if you're a member of the Outlaw Nation, and you want to see me go out my way, the way I deserve to go out. You tweeted Harloff. This will be my last ride. One last ride. One last ride with the outlaw. God damn it, I'm good. One last ride with the outlaw. Hashtag that. One last ride. Tweet at Harloff. You tell him to set up a match for me at Spectacular. I'm so sick of the games that have been played this year. Some of the decisions, some of the bullshit. Harloff, you owe me. So you better make this happen. You talked me out of that tournament. You cost me my money. You cost me my legacy. So you set up the match. I know where you live. And you know if you don't do this, I will be outside your house with a megaphone every night. I will keep you up, your family up. I will keep your neighbors up. I will drive from San Diego every day. I will, I will get people from LA to join me who will be outside in your house of your house with the signs. Outlaw 316. Outlaw 316 says, give me my match. That's the truth. Outlaw 316. No one else gets to say 316 but me, the actual pro wrestling fan, the actual guy with a legacy of blood, sweat, and tears in this game. If you're watching, Harloff, you know I deserve it. 
You know I deserve this. So you talk to your people. You talk to your friends. You talk to your skybound people. You talk to these faction managers. I don't give a shit. But you give me my match. I've more than earned it for what I built. I've made you money hand over fist. So you're going to give me my match, Harloff. And the fans are going to demand it. Yeah, seems like more. Oh, Dom. Hey, Dom's commenting, everybody. Something sarcastic. Look, everybody take a look. Dom. God damn. I feel bad for you, son. Who's texting me? Oh, uh, yeah. Whatever. Action Industries. Who gives a fuck about Action Industries? What is this cam shift action? You mean, you mean whiny guy and whiny bent? Is that what you mean? You mean those two clowns who gives a shit about the action industries? Give me a fucking break. Kaiser. Oh yeah. Kaiser. Let's, let's talk about Kaiser. Give me a break. I don't say nothing about Kevin respect, nothing but respect for Kevin Smets, nothing but respect for Kevin Smets, but I don't have a manager who puts on, you know, uh pseudo blackface to make jokes like he did during the Ben match. I don't do that. Putting on a reggae accent and weird hair. I don't do my manager don't do that shit. My manager is who he is. Whatever that clown came up with there who stuck back in the 80s, he can kiss my ass. Guy too. I'm sure they'll start talking all their shit over there. I'm sure gonna start. they're going to start talking all their shit on Action Industries for the 300 people that watch their shows. Congratulations. I could give a shit. Both of you combined don't have the legacy. Don't even come close to like one foot of the legacy that I've accomplished in this game. And don't think I've forgotten what some of you fuckers pulled and some of the bullshit you pushed. I remember, and I'll always fucking remember. Just so we're clear. Thank you, Eric. I appreciate you allowing it. All right. What do we got here? We got uh, any Streamlabs Super Chats that have come through. Thank you. I appreciate it, Sean, again, for the great donation that got us over the number. Hey, send in some stuff, for God's sake. Send in some Streamlabs, some Super Chats. Tell me some of your favorite memories of the Outlaw, favorite memories of what I've done here in the league. Let me know what you think. I'd love to hear about it. Canada Rock says, enjoy your retirement, Roka. You deserve it. You can have my seat on the bus anytime, old man. Old man, I'll whoop that old ass and you know it. My energy is so far beyond your energy. Please, AJ, nothing but a number with the Outlaw. That's for goddamn sure. Mike Shea says, there is no nation without the outlaw. The MTS wouldn't be what it is now without you and your influence. You are my mentor and my friend and my brother in arms. Respect, Mike. To the ends of the earth, I will follow you there and back. It is mi hermano ahora y siempre. Gracias, Mike. Gracias, Miguel. Lo aprecio mucho. Lo aprecio mucho. Maybe I should do this announcement in Spanish, too. Lo que te estoy diciendo, Harlov, es que me vas a dar mi match, hombre. Por fin vas a dar respeto al outlaw. Todo lo que he creado aquí en este juego de nosotros. Me vas a dar lo que, lo que merezco. Me vas a dar mi match en el espectáculo. A mí no me importa a quién lo tienes que empujar de la carta. Pero para mí me vas a dar mi match, hombre. Yo era el primero hombre, el primero persona de color que ha ganado el campeonato. Yo te he dado Mi corazón, todo mi cuerpo, todo mi alma, para siete seasons de este juego. So yo merezco un match para retirarme de este juego. Un match en el espectacular, un match increíble. Yo merezco. So lo vas a hacer. Lo vas a hacer, Harlow. Yo no estoy jugando aquí, hombre. 
No juegues conmigo. Sabes que voy a hacer lo que yo digo. Somebody translate that for the action industries who speak barely one language combined. Alguien hacer una translación para esos dos estúpidos para que entiendan lo que estoy diciendo. Y uno puede agarrar una pelota, el otro puede agarrar la otra pelota. ¿Qué me importa? No me importa nada. Lo que importa es lo que estoy haciendo aquí. So, con todo mi corazón, les estoy diciendo a todos los que están viendo, todos los que van, todos los que van a ver después, gracias para todo, todo, que, todo lo que me han dado, gracias. Lo que, como me han soportado, lo aprecio mucho. Gracias. That's for my Spanish speakers out there. Chris Taylor, and thank you, Mike, again, for a very, very kind donation. I appreciate it, brother. Chris Taylor says, thanks for all the passion that you put in the Schmodown. Remember, though, you're more than the Schmodown, and I hope others see that, too. You're a talented man, and I can't wait to see what the future holds for you, Rogan. Thank you, Chris. I appreciate that. I always appreciate that. That's what we're building here on this channel. Tim Sim says, so what does Tim Sim say? Where is he? Tim Sim says, wait, so you want anyone as long as you have your one last ride match? Not anyone, Tim. I didn't say anyone. Pay attention. Listen. I know you're a Houston Astros fan, so you can't hear over the banging of the trash can, but I'm telling you, I want a top match to go out on. One last ride. I don't want anyone. I want the one. Brother Loma says, even the creator cannot deny the will of the icon. The outlaw has spoken, so shall it be. Feel it. Feel it in your bones. Ladies and gentlemen, you heard what I had to say. You heard, I gave you your marching orders as soldiers in the outlaw nation. Male and female soldiers in the outlaw nation, or, or however you identify, I respect that madly. However you identify with yourself, you are a soldier in the outlaw nation. Tweet at Harloff, at Christian Harloff. Tell him the outlaw deserves one last match at Spectacular. Hashtag one last ride. Hashtag outlaw 316. I demand my match. That's right. One last ride for the other. Why would I play Gucci? What's wrong with you? I'm going to play Khan? Please. Khan can barely play himself. Get real, Khan. Don't walk into the, these deep waters, Khan. You might drown. You don't want to mess around with the outlaw now. I might just knock you off your horse as we're going across the river, and that's that. The King Kong becomes a jester. You don't want that, do you, King? <laughs> no, that's played out. That's played out. That's not at my level. Harloff, you know what to do. That's going to be that. I am retiring, but I want to go out on my terms. One last match. That's my announcement tonight. That's the Outlaws announcement tonight. All right, let's see what else we got. Anybody else sending in some Streamlabs Super Chats? Want to talk about any of the matches or anything like that? Let me know. Send it in. Justin Toner says, going to miss, you, going to miss seeing you compete. You're on Mount Rushmore, the Shmoda, and you help... Helped build? Helped? Justin, helped? Justin, I think you need to correct yourself before you wreck yourself, son. I built the MTS. Characters are cute. Characters that win matches are legends. And that's what I am. No one was doing what I did. I wrote the book on healdom in this league. I wrote the book on character 
in this league. I wrote the book on how to do character promos in this league. I wrote the book on how to do character promos, scenes in this league. And I wrote the book on how to do character promos, scenes, and win belts in this league. That is my legacy. Now, I know some of your children are going to run out there and start cutting and pasting and making fun and having watch-alongs of this for your 20 followers. Congratulations. Enjoy the pettiness of that. I'm going to ride off into the sunset on my terms. And I'll trample you fools under the hooves of the outlaw's horse and leave you behind. Because pettiness is for small people. And that's what you'll be. All right. Aaron Cliss says, remember when, oh, let me finish what Justin said. I'm sure Justin's going to amend it and apologize. Justin says, favorite memory is beating Dan for the title. I was so happy for you. Proud to be a part of the Outlaw Nation and support your channel. Thank you, Justin. I appreciate it. Always good to have you in the nation. And uh, yeah, that's a great memory. Absolutely. Aaron says, remember when the Outlaw won the bell from Dan? What a fantastic match. First match I ever witnessed. Now, remember when Ben beat Dan for the – oh, the, yeah, that's right. Guy had two opportunities and choked both times. Greatness will be remembered. I didn't say that. You did, Aaron. Now, do I agree with that? Nobody tell him. Joseph, you're late. Go back and watch from the beginning. No one's going to hold your hand in life, son. Go back and watch from the beginning. Jesus Christ. Kevin Merton, also one of my favorite memories as well. The team tile in Orlando. Look, whatever Dan Merle and I have going on right now, the friction between us this season because of the competitive nature of both of us, I will always cherish winning the belt with Dan Merle. Winning the tag team titles. Putting that belt on his shoulder. We did it together. And remember, we had two perfect rounds. We stormed through that second round, into the third, into the fourth, and corruption was stumbling the whole time. I'll always remember that memory. Still uh, young enough to whoop your ass, boy. Show your face. Show your face. It's all in the game. Show you. I mean, look at that. That's an icon. Show that. That's an icon from a movie that's been out for over a year. Pal. Oh, two years almost. Pal, get in the game, son. Get in the game. I don't even have to read this one. It reads itself. I don't even have to read this one for the love of God. That's right. I remember that was the Orlando promo when Chance put a picture of his mom laying out his clothes for the tag team match. I remember this. Mom laid out his clothes on the bed. Chance took a picture and he thought he was going to war. You don't know what war is till you see that first bullet fly over your head. And Chance, you saw it in Orlando, didn't you? When that whole crowd turned on both of you, you understood the power of the outlaw. And yeah, the power of Dan as well. But you understood the power of the outlaw. And that's what matters. Starfire Triple X says, we'll miss you. I hope you can still maybe help on the desk. Still love when you beat Dan that first time. The Burbs. That's right. Tough movie, the Burbs. Tough movie. I'm going to leave it at that. Tim Franco says, my favorite memory is Roca crushing pina coladas at Barney's. Roca, not the outlaw. Roca crushing pina coladas. The outlaw is all sarsaparilla and moonshine, son. On the rocks. Real rocks, not that ice shit. Real rocks. Look at this person who's a proud specimen. I mean, imagine being the parent of the person 
who comes up with Jared Leto's big boner. Hey, daddy, have I made you proud? Hey, daddy, have I made you proud? No, no, pal. Being ignorant is your talent. I'm sure your dad would tell me the same. <laughs> Look at these clowns. These clowns. Uh, I'm loving it. I'm loving it. Oh, the horsemen reveal. That was fantastic. Yes. The five horsemen reveal. That was all. You know how much work I had to do to get Riley, Merle, and Inman to join Nost and I? A lot of stuff behind the scenes to make that happen. Once again, yet another thing the outlaw did to build the legacy of the Schmodown. That is one of the top five moments in the history of the game. It was incredible. Well, Jared Leto, I mean, learn to write a better, a more clear sentence here, Jared Leto's big boner. Learn to write a clearer sentence. And I'll take back what I said about your dad. That's right. Nobody is better. Nobody is good on the mic. That's right. They all think they're as good as I am. They're all think, they all think they're as great as I am, but they're not. Let's tell the truth. They're not. There have been maybe three or four promos that have been the top promos that everyone refers to. And I give all the flowers to Clark Wolf for that promo of We Are the League. That is one of the greatest promos you're ever going to see anywhere. She deserves all the flowers for that. But no one is going to beat the heart I bring to my promos. Remember the promo when we lost to corruption the first time? And we were, we were uh, robbed by a terrible decision on the desk? And I was done. I showed my heart. I showed my tears, I think, for the first time. Even I did that before anyone else did. Showed the emotion of the game. Took you behind the curtain. That's what the outlaw does. And I was playing Bibiani next, and I wasn't even sure I was going to play him. And then somewhere in the middle of that promo, the outlaw clicked in. He said, get the hell up, son. You ain't done. You got a match for the title next. So get ready for that. And I went after Bibbs. Yeah. <clears throat> Dom says he skips the promos. Don, you skip life. Let's get real. You don't just skip the promos, pal. You skip life. You want this beating? I did. Oh, was there an earthquake tonight? No surprise. The outlaw coming in hot can shake the earth. 2.9 is just for starters. If I don't get my match, Harloff, we're going seven or eight on the Richter scale. That's no joke. You seen La Brea? Those commercials for La Brea? If I don't get my match, I'm going to send you through that hole in the ground to prehistoric times. And we'll see how you do then. Try to set up a match between a Triceratops, that's right, JT, and a Pterodactyl. Only the outlaw can do that. I'll ride a T-Rex into my match. Jason Fasthorse, love that name, says, watching you since 2016, love the match with Double Toasted and the SCN episode with Corey Coleman. Yeah, Corey's great. You always bring the fire brimstone to the Schmodown. That's right. Brother Lomas. I love what Brother Lomas does. But I've been delivering sermons on the mount for quite some time in this league. Respect to Brother Lomas coming in. Love him on the Finstock Exchange. He brings the fire from above. But I I've been delivering the word for seasons in this league. And people know it. People know it. People forgot. Am I buffering? It's probably because of the earthquake. Ryan Chase says, Roka, don't have anything rude to say. I love you, man, even though I'm a Dungeon fan and Bibbs fan. Anyways, please insult me, LOL. No, Ryan, I love Bibbs. Bibbs and I, we done patched up the past. We are great together now. I love Bibbs. Respect Bibbs. He's one of my favorite people on the planet now. 
And it was great to have him on the Outlaw Nation a few weeks ago, hanging out with us, selling his soap, talking about uh, um, all the stuff he's got going on in his career, all the things he's building. And I respect it madly. I would love to do, if I didn't have 700 shows, I would love to do a show with Bibbs. I think Bibbs and I just come from things from two different perspectives. Could be a lot. We could be the new Siskel and Ebert. You move Whitney aside, you make me and him the new Siskel and Ebert. That's the truth. Mike saying it. John is the goat. Damn right. The outlaw is the goat. Greatest of all time. That's the truth. <sighs> Bibbs does have 700 shows. Yeah. Who? Once again, who laid the groundwork for that? Who showed you that it could be done? Do you know how many people told me to stop doing so many shows? You don't understand. When that shit happened at Collider, the shows kept the outlaw alive. The shows kept the outlaw going. It was important. You never know. I like that John Roast is good. I like John Roast. That's right. I like that. All the shows, all the records. Thank you, Justin. I appreciate that. I'm not disrespecting Whitney in any way, shape, or form. I'm just making a joke. That's all. That's right. Timothy, the goddamn outlaw giving me chums. I love this son of a bitch. That's right, you do. That's some Aussie love. That's not easy to come by. Australians don't just love anybody, by the way. They love certain people for a reason. The authentic ones, the real ones. And that's what I've always been. That's why people get mad at what the outlaw has built. People get mad or jealous or angry about the outlaw nation. You've heard it in other groups. How come he has so many people? Why do so many people follow him? You know why? Because I'm real. The outlaw is real. I give you shit. I bust your balls. That's tough love. Tough love sometimes is what gets the job done. Not all the time. Lord knows not all the time. But sometimes a little tough love gets the job done. And tough love is what I've had to administer to myself sometimes to get me ready for matches for titles. And tough love is sometimes what I've had to give to myself after I've lost titles as well. Roka versus Snyder, one last ride. Let's do this, Schmo Gods. Yeah, the guy I've never beaten ever in the history of my life. Jeff Snyder. That's another person I'd love to have a show. We're talking about doing a show together. Maybe just a podcast. We'll see. We'll see. That's right, Soul. Tough love all around, even towards the outlaw. Soul, one of my best outlaw nation patrons. I mean, you're all great. Don't get me wrong, all my patrons of the outlaw nation. But Soul's the one who tries to get me focused, tries to get me on the right track mentally sometimes when I veer off, you know. She's great. I respect it. All right, let's see what we got here. Some stream labs have come through. Let me read them here. Alan Smithy, Roca, you always do it your way, and I love it. You are the master of character and getting those belts. Can't wait to see your upcoming match. Well, make it happen, Smithy. Tweet at Harloff. Get that hashtag one last ride. The pressure from the fans. We've seen what pressure from the fans can do in any scenario, in any arena. And Harloff, you're about to see the pressure of the outlaw nation. Talk me out of a tournament? I'll be damned if you're not going to give me my match. Mild mannered comic nerd said, just showing some love and thank you. Thank you, mild mannered comic nerd. That's a very kind donation. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Tushka Salutation says, Favorite moment was when you battled through illness to show up and deliver at Spectacular two years ago. The lights go out and the crowd went nuts. You are in all of the most iconic MTS moments in history. You are a master of your craft. Hashtag spoonsmanship. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Remember that Spectacular? My God, it feels like a lifetime ago. But that was a hell of a thing. Some of us can show up to play when we're sick. I climbed out of that bed. Remember when Rachel and Mara played after the stuff that was going on with them? Like I, there's no way I could lie down with the bronchitis and not find a way to defend that belt.
to ride alongside my partner, Dan Merle, at the time and not try to defend that belt against two of the best players the Schmodown's ever seen in Bibiani and Brendan Meyer, the kid. Those ladies were an example for me. I was like, if they can do it, I got to be able to do it. Uh, against doctor's orders, they smuggled me out of the hospital. Finstock did to get me onto that stage so I could play. And it was worth it. It was incredible. It took all my energy. Now, by the end of the night, we were holding almost all the belts. And it was a beautiful night for the Finstock exchange for sure. Timothy Williams says, outlaw, outlaw, outlaw. Oi, oi, oi. Thank you, Tim. My favorite memory is the outlaw strut walk after kicking Bateman's ass. Oh, yeah, I remember that match. That was fun. That was a lot of fun. That was the best. Rondo Calrissian says, hate to see you go, but excited about the match. Are you ceasing all involvement with MTS or just from competition? Would you ever consider returning as a manager? Rondo, I appreciate your question, but right now I'm not focused on anything except getting this match. I can't predict the future. You never know. People say one thing and then all of a sudden they turn around and do something else. So I don't know. All I'm focusing on is getting Harloff to give me my match. You can make that happen. You can help to make that happen by tweeting at him and giving him that hashtag one last ride. Or Roka 3 or Outlaw 316. Says, I demand my match. You're going to give me my match. Outlaw 316 says, give me my match. That's the truth. Somebody make a shirt out of that. Put the mask in the O. I'm not telling you what to do your job. I'm just saying that's how you do it. So we'll see if there's a future past the match. All I care about is getting this match. And Harloff has pulled enough bullshit this year. I need my match. He owes it to me and he knows it. So you all shake his tree a little bit so that match falls out right into my hands. Flaming Shop says, who are your top five Schmodown players of all time in order? Flaming Soup, I'm not going to give you that for a dollar. You want your top, you want my top five Schmodown players for a dollar? No offense. I'll give you one. Dan Murrow. For a dollar, you get one. Aaron, whoa, Aaron. Aaron. Thank you, Aaron. Aaron Klister says, the outlaw doesn't talk or yell. He exclaims truths. And carves prophecies in marble. Woo! He has helped me in my life in so many aspects. I, honest to God, would not be alive without the greatest of all time. Greatness sparks, starts, and ignites more greatness. I appreciate that. If I could take a moment to be honest about what you said, Aaron, it means the world to me to hear that. You know, when I came into the league, I was just focused on being the outlaw and winning matches and kind of seeing if I can do this. But as I went along and saw how many people were affected by what I was doing, how many people were living and breathing and dying in my through what I was going through in my matches, it blew me away. It changed my entire perception of what this game could be. It changed, you all changed me. You all inspired me to be great. You all inspired me to channel my greatness into the outlaw into the Outlaw Nation, into this channel, into the work I do. You inspired me. So if I could in any way inspire anyone to pick themselves up after, after a tough loss in life, that's the reality. Movie trivia matches are movie trivia matches, but reality, in reality, we take losses in life. But if you can take an example, or you can take something from what I've done and it inspires you. It helps you get up. It helps you fight that extra bit more. I meant what I said at the end of Orlando in that promo. Sometimes it feels like the mountain is too big to climb. And when you get knocked down that mountain and you fall all the way down or you fall halfway down or three quarters of the way down, you look back up and you think to yourself, my God, I can't go through this again. 
but you don't understand the strength you actually had to go through it again. You don't know the strength you have to walk back up that mountain one step at a time. You're too busy beating yourself up. Well, cut that out. When you roll down, brush off the dirt, catch your breath a little bit, look up that mountain, you say, you're not beating me. And every step you take up that mountain is a victory. Don't discount it. Every step up that mountain is a victory. And if you don't make it up that mountain, if something happens before you can make it up that mountain, all of us who've been climbing our mountains tip our hat and give you our respect for even trying. Because that's what really matters. Fighting to climb that mountain to get to the top of that mountain, there's respect in that. And not everyone gets there. But as long as you can find a way to keep moving up that mountain, that matters. And I have my own struggles. I have things I, I fight. And man, this mountain here of Christian Harloff, Mount Harloff, I got to climb Mount Harloff. And I need all of you climbing with me, yodeling the Harloff at the top to give me my match. And we're going to get there. I don't care what we have to do. We're going to get there. And he's going to give me my match. The skewed one says, I'm eating up God knows how much mobile data to be here while I'm at the lab. Love you, outlaw. Skewed one, thank you. I've been there where you are at in the mobile data and struggling to see how much of that, but I appreciate it. I appreciate it madly for you allowing your mobile data to be eaten up while you're hanging out with me, man. It means the world. Damn right. Give me my match. Look at this motherfucker trying to tell me what to do with my show. Yeah, there's other topics in the rundown. How much of a fool is all in the game is the next topic we're going to talk about. How much of an idiot is all in the game? That's the next topic we're going to talk about next on the Outlaw Nation. So let's line that one up. Thank you, James Fond, for the super sticker. I appreciate it. Let's see here. What else we got here? Mild-mannered comic nerd says, I forgot to ask, would you go against Ethan again? Thanks again. Ah, Ethan. Now that's one of the greats in the game as well. Would I go toe-to-toe with Ethan? I wanted to. I was one question away from taking on Irwin. Going to that sudden death with Ben the Bateman. So close. He tried everything he could to throw me off my game. Even created some nonsense out of thin air to try to throw me off my game. But I played a hell of a match. Just got unlucky with the question in sudden death. Happens. You can't watch every movie. Certainly, I'd never seen Angry Birds, and I hadn't thought of the jacket in years. But that's the way it goes sometimes. All I know is in the first singles match, we didn't need to go to sudden death. Took care of business within the constraints of the three-round match. Sean Barito says, all the belts, all the records is the hands-down best line ever said in movie trivia showdown history. Go Giants and go Yankees. Hell yeah. I appreciate that. All the belts, all the records. That I came up with that on the fly in the middle of a promo. I'm always coming up with shit on the fly. That's another reason why the outlaw is great. Coming up with stuff on the fly. One last ride like tonight. Coming up with stuff on the fly. Outlaw 316 says, give me my match. Jason Fastor says, love how much love and support you had for Kevin Smets's Smasher, no one has a bigger heart than the outlaw. Damn right. God damn right. If you treat me right, I will treat you right. If you fuck with the outlaw, the outlaw is going to fucks with you. That's how it works. Kevin Smets has always done right by me. And I respect him madly. I don't know about the company he keeps lately. 
but I respect him madly and his journey. My father passed from cancer, so I have extra special care for that situation. And he is an example. He is an inspiration to so many, not just to get tested, but not to take certain things that happen in your life as the end. He fought up that mountain. He climbed up that mountain, sometimes on his knees, sometimes on his belly. He crawled up that mountain. He deserves all the respect and love in the world for what he was able to accomplish, for sure. Secular Monk says, uh, Merle Roca 3, make it happen. Merle's a contender. Irwin is a contender. Timothy R. Williams says, if I could give the outlaw a secondary nickname, it's the blueprint. Damn. Anyone great, any great player in the ring on the mic or in the promos has followed the outlaw's blueprint, plays both heel and face. Damn right. Damn right, Timothy. Well said. Well said, Timothy. Well said. If only I could hear it in your pristine Australian accent, I would play it here on the uh, on the show. But I appreciate that. All the belts, all the records, in spite of all the other catchphrases, Outlaw is the OG. Thank you, Becky. I appreciate the flowers, Becky. Thank you. Much love to you. Appreciate that madly. You could fill a book. Should the outlaw write a book, a tell-all of his time in the Shmoda? Should the outlaw write a book? Ken Napsok wrote a book, and it was great. Jason Inman has wrote a couple of books, and they're great. Certainly, Alicia Malone has killed it writing books. She's fantastic. Should the outlaw write a book about his time in the Shmoda? Oh, my God. What would it be called? All the stories, all the truths? Maybe. It's a good one, right? Harloff tweeted out that gif of Mike's no, 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 no. Oh, what a surprise. Of course he used a Kalinowski gif. What other gif is he going to use? Harloff, you can put up all the gifts you want. I'm mobilizing the nation. And when all of us set our sights on something, we're unstoppable. So Harloff, you can tweet all of Kalinowski's gifts. Tweet them all. Hell, I'll tweet a couple with you. But it ain't going to matter. You're going to give me my match. These fans are going to make sure you give me my match. And I can already see other players trying to grab on to the Outlaws coattails with what I'm doing here tonight. Stay in your lane. Mind your fucking business. This is my shit. Go and build your legacy off someone else's coattails. <laughs> That's right. I got enough blood to spare. I can write it in blood. There it is again. All in the will the book be even longer? I mean, somebody give this guy like does somebody give this guy what, what's what's where's his thing? Uh Sean, find this guy's YouTube channel. I want to see how many subscribers this guy has. Click it right now. Don't let him escape. Don't let him log out. Go find him. Yeah, I heard you already the first time. What did your daddy and mommy not listen to you that you need to repeat a thing a second time and capitalize it? What do you need? What happened? You want to come in live and let the outlaw give you some parenting? Uh, is that what you need? Is that what you need? It's all in the game. Sean, find it. Send me in the private chat. I will absolutely. You, do you need a you need a whooping boy? You need a whooping? I'll give you a whooping. Yeah, don't ever forget the blindfold match against Harloff, Goat Moment. Yeah, people forget about that. Yet again, building memories, building moments that built this league, inspired players, whether they tell me to my face or not. Whether they're on a faction where they're allowed to tell me how much I inspired them. I've heard that from some other faction uh, people. I've heard that from some other, that some other managers tell them not to talk positively about the outlaw. Even though some of them are inspired by what I did. 
the blindfold match. I've told that story, came up with it on the fly, driving into the match. I knew I had a colossal fight against Harloff. I knew everybody in the crowd was going to be for Harloff. Driving by a CVS, I think to myself, do they have blindfolds? Pull into the parking lot, jump out of the car, run into the CVS, find a black blindfold, pay for it, run in the car, get to the match just in time, hide it in my jacket. Harloff doesn't even know I'm going to do this. And the whole time before I walk out, I'm like, am I going to do it? Am I going to do it? Am I going to do it? And like I do most things in my life, I'm organic. And if it feels like the right moment, then I do it. I feed off the crowd. I can sense the vibration in the crowd. I can feel the energy through my fingers. And I knew it was the right moment to pull out the blindfold. I can beat you blindfolded. That's talking smack. And Harloff knew I took it to the next level, and I brought a hell of a game to Christian Harloff. And I even threw some jokes in with uh, with Natasha, who was great. Well, you guys are being incredibly generous tonight. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for all the stuff you've sent in. Keep sending in your stream labs and super chats as we go along. Woo! I'm exhausted, Sean. I think I might need a little break. I don't know if it's here. Let me see if it's here. All right. Cooley High says, love you, Roka. Keep being great, fam. Cooley, love you. Thanks for being part of the Outlaw Nation. Thanks for listening to our stereo show every Saturday that the Outlaw does with the Lady Outlaw, where we talk all kinds of stuff around Marvel. This week, finally, on Saturday, we are talking Shang-Chi. For uh, maybe 3 or 4 p.m., we're going to announce the time. We're in L.A. right now. We're going to be driving back. We'll see how we feel Saturday morning after we wake up back in our own bed, what time we're going to do it. But absolutely. Thank you, Maria, for a little Carly Simon love. Nobody does it better. Makes me feel sad for the rest. So true. So true. All right, I'm going to take a, a little bit of a break here. As soon as this thing finishes, lo finishes loading, and I'm going to play something for you all, a little video for you all to remind you of how great the outlaw is. And then we're going to get into the other topics. Or answer some more of your questions. If you want, send in your stream labs and super chats over the next minute or so while this is playing. And I'll be back in just a second. A little reminder of what I've done in this league. The Outlaw! Yeah! Outlaw Nation! From best bid to best in, destined for greatness, he's a champion. A round of applause, now bow down to the boss and make way for the rise of the outlaw. Blazing the trail with the Latin fire deep in his course, keeping it burning cause you know he gon' be coming for more. So get ready, a war pass has begun against the man who has defied all laws. Now where's the number one dead man? The gunslinger of the slowdown, step under the lights, you know it's gonna be a throwdown. Riding high, got the horseman by his side, sight set on anybody who is gunning for the prize. All the belts, all the records, ain't nobody here is safe, so best get out of the way. He's gonna put you in your place, and I think it's safe to say, save the things for his return, cause it's about to get great. Come on, say it with me. Can't say it. Can't say it. Can't say it. The chance is here.
Always. Always. Thank you for that little bit. Oh, okay. So you don't see a channel, huh? All right. All right, Sean. Thank you all so much. Oh, yeah. That was, yeah. Shout out to Nerd Chronic for putting that together. He put the original one together for me a few years ago or a couple of years ago, I guess. And I asked him to update it for me. And he was very kind. You know, Nerd Chronic, one of the best people in the Schmodown, one of the nicest guys, one of the most intelligent, one of the most talented MFers that you're ever going to meet. I would love to have Nerd Chronic help me on my channel, but he's so busy doing a million things. I can't afford to have a Nerd Chronic help me, but he's been incredible. And when he when I asked him to do the promo, he was willing to do it, didn't want any money, and he was very kind. He was very kind to do that promo for me. Um, he's one of my favorites, you know, and he's one of the guys, when I met him, the first time I met him, nothing but love both sides. Nothing. I could immediately feel that this is a guy who respected the game, who loved the game, who appreciated the game. That's what matters. All right. What else do you guys want to talk about? We got about 25 minutes left. All right, so let's talk about this X-Men thing real quick. So apparently this is a big deal. Should we talk about that? Do you care? Do you guys want to talk about What do you want to talk about? I can talk about anything. I got about another 30 minutes left before I got to hang out with the Lady Outlaw. What do you got? What do you guys want to talk about? What do you got, Sean? Yeah, exactly. What do you got for me, Sean? Yeah, live on the channel. I love it. All right. Rhonda Calmercian saying it rests no longer about titles and belts, but about the outlaw and the nation deserving this match. Hard off, submit. Submit. That's what you got to do. All right, fine. Let's talk about the X Men thing. Sean, you got an article for that? Bring it up for me, man. You're supposed to produce the show, Sean, for God's sake. Have this stuff ready to go. Oh, my God. So this is coming from... Oh, I don't want to do... I don't want to use them. Yeah, I'm not using We Got This Covered. Is that who it's supposed to come... That's who it came from, right? David James over at We Got This Covered. So... This has been coming out. Uh, Victoria Alonzo, uh, you know, we've seen her name on a number of Marvel projects. Marvel recently promoted her to a president position uh, recently. And uh, people are upset because they're fi- they found an old quote from uh, back in 2019 during her appearance on Nuke the Fridge. And the host there asked uh, Victoria Alonzo, who's done incredible work for Marvel, can you give me a little hint of where the future is going and the excitement? That was the question. And she said, I don't know where the future is going. It's funny that people call it the X-Men. There's a lot of female superheroes in that X-Men group. So I think it's outdated. I don't know where it's going to go. She responded. Um, And as I said, she was recently promoted to a president position. Kevin Feige said, Victoria has been an incredible partner and part of our team since the very first Iron Man. She's one of the most dynamic, candid, and accessible executives in the industry. We're thrilled that she'll continue to be by our side in this elevated role as we lead Marvel Studios into the future. So a lot of people made a big deal out of this, got all upset about it, got all crazy about it, and it's not that big of a deal. First of all, you got to take it with a grain of salt. Because we got this covered, is covering it as if she just said it. And it's not true. Uh, She said it, but it was in the context of just a conversation. You know, what's wrong with floating ideas or exploring possibilities? The only thing in constant, the only constant in life is change. And maybe they just wanted to explore this possibility with Victoria Alonzo or, or Victoria Alonzo and Marvel. We're just kicking around the idea. 
you know, X men. Well, I mean, it's supposed to stand for, you know, women and men, but I understand how someone could look at that and see that as, as only focusing on men. I get that, but there's always been female members of the X men from the beginning with Jean Grey. It's never been an issue into so many other care storm rogue Jubilee. So many incredible X men who've been women through the years. If they want to make a change, you know, X people isn't going to work. X humans isn't going to work. X mutants could be a possibility. Although we just got the new mutants and it wasn't that positive of a reaction. So there are many ways they can go. But I think people going crazy about it just makes me laugh. Like what is wrong with someone presenting something and then taking a moment and going, okay, well, let's see where it goes. Let's see what they got to say. Let's see where they're going to take it. We got to get create space for it. Yeah, X-Force, right. Experts because they know their shit. Yeah, that's a good one. Um, I don't know what they're going to do, but if they want to change it, I think they have a right to change What all, I think all we care about is to have consistently good X-Men movies, which we haven't gotten. There are some. But the amount of bad X-Men movies versus good X-Men movies, the bad, in my opinion, outweigh, especially if, if you fold in Wolverine, if you fold in um, some of the other uh, X-Men related films, it's not that positive. How many other four, maybe five? I mean, Logan, if that counts as an X-Men film, if you're going to count it, Logan, Days of Future Past, X-Men, X-Men 2. Some people like first class i don't last stand's terrible apocalypse is terrible dark phoenix is terrible the first two wolverines not that good although the second wolverine is good until the last 30 minutes of the movie or 20 minutes of the movie I love this. All of my exes are women. Just saying. Yeah, okay. Got it. <coughs> Oof. I think I talked a lot tonight, Sean. I might be running out of gas here. Ugh. Anyway, we're going to see what happens with it. We're going to see where it goes. Me, personally, I don't think it's that big of a deal that she got promoted. She, like Kevin Feige said, she's been there since the first uh, Iron Man. She has more than earned her bones. And Lord, no, she doesn't even me to say anything to validate her achievements. She has been an incredible part of the X-Men, I'm sorry, of the Marvel Universe. So if they want to explore the possibility of like kind of making this work, and listen, we're changing as a society. We're becoming more aware. We're becoming more accepting, we're becoming more progressive of people's, um, how they identify themselves. And we're creating space for understanding of that. The small-minded aren't. But the open-minded, which is a majority of us, I believe, are. Because we don't care. It's not that big of a deal to us. However you identify, just let me get used to it. Be, be patient with me if I make a mistake. Because it's not disrespectful. It's just getting used to it. And we'll go from there. Now, if they want to explore messing around with the X-Men stuff, I think that's fine. Have some fun with it. Let's see what they create. That's 100% the truth. The other side of this thing, the other thing we'll talk about tonight is the Emmys. And we'll swing back to the Schmodown here in the in the last 10 minutes of the or last 10, 15 minutes of the uh, of the of the show tonight. I mean, it's kind of crazy to, you know, like it's hitting me, the idea that I'm retiring, that I'm really walking away from the game once and for all. It's kind of crazy. But it's been a long time coming. I've given so much to this game. And you know, this was not a decision I came to lightly. But I'm going out my way, like I said. By hook or by crook, I'm going out my way. The other thing we're going to talk about tonight was the Emmys, right? A lot of people get upset. Emmys so white, Emmys this, Emmys that. And I understand it. I, you know, Jeff Snyder and I were on the phone the other day going back and forth about it. And certainly I'm not going to. Uh, reveal Jeff Snyder's opinions one way or another about the situation, but we were just talking about it. 
And I, I got to be honest with you. I'm of two minds because I do understand the complaint. And I think the complaint is valid. And the complaint's been valid for a number of years on award shows. That there are too many white nominees. White nominees win more, way more often than they don't. And uh, people of color don't have the same volume of shows being uh, uh, being um, greenlit by these studios to be able to qualify and vie for these awards with more prestigious, uh, more, how can I say this? More emotional, more complex, more nuanced kind of work. There is some great work that is out there from people of color. Lovecraft Country, I May Destroy You, so many things. Watchmen from last year. There's so many things that people of color are creating now and getting access to. And we're seeing these studios opening the doors to more people of color creating shows and creating movies and all of that and giving them more respect to create the stuff that they're creating that's going to open the door for more people to be nominated and that's what matters so i understand the frustration and i think the frustration is valid and in no way does it take away the victories of the people who won that night i mean ted lasso was very deserving for that first season Hannah Waddingham is fantastic in that show. T uh, Jason Sudeikis is fantastic in that show. I love The Crown. I really enjoyed The Crown. So I can't sit here as a person of color and say, yeah, those they didn't deserve it. <coughs> those were incredible shows. Mayor of Easttown was a fantastic show. What I take away from this is not, you know, fuck the Academy, fuck the voting situation. What I take away from this is People need to wake these studios up to green light more shows from people of color, more content from people of color so we can have perspectives. You know, we're just about to have the Wonder Years or just the Wonder Years actually just started like last week, I think. It's set in the 1960s. It's a black family exploring uh, America in the 1960s through their lens. We've seen some of that before in the past. I want to see... The black experience through the 70s, through the 80s, through the 90s. You know, everyone thinks of the, or a lot of people think of the 80s as like this time of like, you know, John Hughes and Bubblegum Pop. Well, there were no black people in John Hughes movies. What was the black experience in the 80s? I want to see that. Where are, where is the pretty and pink for Latino people, for black people, for Asian people? Where is the 16 Candles for people like that? Where, is, where are those stories to be told? And that's what I want to see, because I think that helps us as a society to expand our mind, to expand our perspectives, to expand our points of views, to expand our knowledge of our fellow um, humans, not even Americans. I don't even want to make it nationalistic. Humans. And that's important. So although I agree to call out the Emmys, this is about a larger fight. Some people may be mad about this year and be like, oh, but you, can you tell me they didn't deserve it? I get it. You can be mad about it all you want. But you need to understand that the movement is about inclusivity, about creating more opportunities for people of color. So if they're going to risk getting a little bit of the backlash this year because the overall goal is to wake studios up to start greenlighting more projects from people of color. And there's certainly audiences for these shows, as we've seen over the last few years, how some of these shows have captured the pop culture imagination and have been a part of the conversation pop culturally because of what's been created. So there needs to be more of that. Douglas says, when I think of the 80s, I think of people living life like Tony Montana from Scarface. <laughs> Let me tell you, as a Latino... In a Latino family, 80s, none of us were living like Scarface in the 1980s. Let me just tell you that right now. Yeah, there you go. Uh, Tushka talking about reservation dogs. Exactly. That's a great next step. I mean, the idea of a Native American comedy on Hulu produced by Taika Waititi, one of the producers. Crazy, but it's happening. So 
although people might be and, and look I'll, I'll i'll even talk to people of color people of color might be upset about the emmy so white thing be patient it's changing way quicker over the last few years than anyone ever anticipated so the stuff has to go into production it has to get put out there i think the studios have heard the call I've, already, I've, I've talked to a number of my white actor friends who've been a little frustrated because they're no longer getting the volume of opportunities that they did in the past. They're now understanding what it's like to be a minority actor in this business. What I experienced for 15 years in this business. 40 Latinos going for that one role for one line or five lines in a fucking show. White actors are now getting so crazy upset about it. White male actors especially. But this is the game. The pendulum has swung back now. That's a positive. That's a good thing. Now you can no longer rely on just being white to get you through the door. Now you've got to fight and scratch and claw with other people for those roles. How much do you want it? And that's important. Uh, all in the game saying something intelligent finally tonight, saying more needs to be done to make the voting block both more diverse and watch a range of shows, not just the usual suspects. That's fair. Absolutely fair. But there's got to be shows for them to watch. There have got to be more shows from people of color, from creators of color out there for people to watch so that they can be part of these. Uh, 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 they can be voted on. And yes, the voting block, absolutely the Oscars over the last five years has made a real concerted effort to become younger, to include more people of color, to include more women, and specifically more women of color, because we know white women are a majority of the women that get included in these things, and they think that's enough. Just letting white women through the door is enough. Those days are done. You've got to let women of color through the door in large numbers as well. That's important. Because don't tell me white women are not going to vote for white stuff. You know. It's the same situation. You've got to have more people of color in the voting block. And you've got to go younger because younger people are more, more open to exploring new approaches to content, new, new kinds of content from different creators, from people of color, from people from the LGBTQ community. All of that wide open. That needs to happen. Uh, all right, where are we at in, in terms of likes right now? Where are we at in terms of likes? 235 likes. We're 15 likes away from 250. Let's get to 250. Come on now. Also, are there any more stream labs coming in? We got about 12 minutes, I think, or 12, yeah, 12, 15 minutes before I wrap this thing up because I got to get to bed and I got to hang out with the Lady Outlaw. So have you got any questions, any stream labs, any support you want to give for the Outlaw tonight? As I announce my retirement from the league, but on my terms, it's not effective immediately. It's retiring after my one last match. Send in some support now. The stream live address is pinned in the chat. It's in the description of this video. It's right there on the screen twice. Right there and right there. There you go. Oh, do me a favor. If you're watching this, don't tweet at me anything anybody says about my about this show tonight. I know there are going to be haters. I know there are going to be people who act the fool and giggle their asses off because they haven't been raised properly. I don't care. I don't need to see it. Don't tweet at me. I don't care. Harloff, that you can tweet at me. Harloff's response is, let me know about that. But anybody else doing stupid stuff at my expense because they're trying to get views for themselves, using me to get views for themselves because they can't get views on their own. I don't need to see it. Exactly. Thank you, Justin. I appreciate it. See, just when I gave him credit, he says something stupid. It's a shame. Just when I gave him a little bit of credit. Thank you, Dean. Greetings from Scotland. Love the cinephiles. Thank you. Appreciate that, my man. What is is Christian said something? Is Christian Twitter? Let's take a look here. Do we do we know? Let's see.
Oh, let's see how many notices we got here. Hey, hey, thank you, Mike Shea. That's an awesome tweet. I appreciate that, my man. Wow, Galaxy Geeks, that's incredible. I appreciate that, man. That's awesome. Look at that. Come up with that thing. Yeah. Ooh, look at these people tweeting at Christian Harlov. I love it. You may not like it, but accept it. Learn to live with it. <laughs> Denzel, I love it. Look at these people tweeting at Harloff. I love it. Thank you all so much. Look at all these people. I appreciate it madly. Jay Wade, thank you very much. <laughs> Someone wants me to take on Kevin Smith. I love it. Look at all these people bringing it. I love it. Thank you very much for everybody who's tweeting at him. Keep tweeting at him. If you watch this later on, keep tweeting at him. I appreciate it. Oh, all right. Let's see. We got any more that have come through? Oh, okay. Here we go. Last Cinema Sailor uh, says, uh, Outlaw Nation reigns. I heard some loser, some punk. Mocking black and white movies. I threw a VHS at him and sent him crying home to his mama. Are you going to catch the Fathom event showing of Citizen Kane? Stay strong, brother. Absolutely. I saw that. I've already marked it down in my calendar. I am going to see that. I'm mad at myself that I didn't go see Ghost in the Shell in, four, in a 4K on the IMAX. I just didn't. The timing of it coming up here, it just kind of didn't make sense. I couldn't find the moment to go see it in time, sadly. So I'm mad about that. But I will definitely see uh, Citizen Kane uh, there all, through the Fathom events. I've seen it so many times in theaters living in LA. It'll be nice to see it in San Diego and I'll try to find the biggest screen I can see it on because I can't wait to buy it on Criterion as well. By the way, my birthday's coming up October 23rd. Just letting you all know when I've got a, uh, a Amazon Prime, uh, you know, uh, what do you call that? Amazon Prime wish list. Uh, and I've also got a PO box, which I'll be uh, announcing, I guess, sometime soon. I guess on Saturday, on the stereo show, but if other people want to know the PO box, you can DM me. If you want to send me anything, DM me and I'll, I'll show, I'll give you the box uh, or the address. If you want to send anything, Aaron Clister says for this question, money is not an issue. And also you can get anyone from any time on your final Shmodan entrance. Want band or performer? Well, what band or performer would you want to play for you? Oh my God. Money is not an issue. And I get anyone from any time. That's a great question. Can I get Rage Against the Machine? I think that's what it would be. I mean, I love Triple H's entrances. Those are fucking incredible. I would love to come out to a Rage Against the Machine type of entrance. Even come out like Triple H does with the throne being carried and the people next to me wearing the outlaw masks, the, the beaver vendetta masks, that would be awesome. Let's just call those outlaw masks from now on. Let's just call those the outlaw masks. That's what they belong to. So, that, so that's what I would say. Either Rage Against the Machine. Man, I wonder who else. Maybe even get Wu-Tang to come out. Maybe Wu-Tang do the second entrance. Wu-Tang coming out with a second entrance, walk me to the ring. That would be great. Ken, thank you, Aaron. I appreciate that. Canada Rock says, Harloff better give you the match. Looks like I'll be able to come down to see the spectacular after all, and it will be my privilege, privilege to see your last match in person. You have my respect, Outlaw. Thank you, man. Appreciate that. j Dog says, are you doing game time on Monday? I'll be in Cleveland for the last home game. The Indians will be known as such. I can do a live hit if you want. Will it be around that time? Will it be around that time? Let me know, j Dog. Oh, this is brilliant. Blaze of Glory. Oh, my God. Bon Jovi. I think they're broken up right now, but 
Bon Jovi playing Blaze of Glory as I walk out to the ring, that's uh, pretty fucking good. That would be an awesome way to come out to the ring. Shot down in a yeah, rogue against the machine. That's right. There you go. Rogue against. That's basically the same thing. That's basically the same thing. Absolutely. John Williams of the full orchestra. Come on. Let's do it. <laughs> of course, protect your neck. Of course, protect your neck. Of course, it would be that song. That'd be perfect. Santana on the guitar. Why not? Right on top of the desk. Well, Douglas, we just did. Douglas is asking if we do game time on Tuesdays. We just did game time on Tuesdays, Douglas, at three o'clock this past Tuesday. I don't know if you saw it, but that was a great time to do it. So, yeah, I'm considering doing it at that time, three to four thirty p.m. Because we were able to cover Monday Night Football. We had over 115 people watching us at that time, and we had Winston and Ben Goddard on. It was great. So, yeah, I'm very much considering that possibility for sure. So, yeah, I mean, this it's just put it together. Midnight Mass, Netflix in four minutes. All right, there you go. All right, let's wrap it up here, man. Anybody else got any Streamlabs or Super Chats before I wrap it up? We're, at the, we're getting into the two-hour mark, and I got to get it going. Um, so and five more likes to 250 likes. Get it to, to get it, get us five more likes. Get us over the 250 likes. Let's make it happen. Yeah, I'm looking at you. Let's make it happen. Five more likes. There we go. 250 likes. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. All right. As we wrap this thing up, thank you to everyone who hung out with me tonight. Harloff, I'm not joking. Make this happen. Been messing around with this league all season. You talked me out of that singles tournament. So now I want my match. Everybody out there already tweeting at him. Keep doing it. Everybody who's watching this later on, tweet at Christian Harloff. Give the Outlaws match. Hashtag one last ride. Do it once and for all. All right. Thank you all so much for joining me tonight. I appreciate it madly. You all are the best. As I said, it's been my honor to be part of the Schmodown for seven seasons, to be part of everything that's happened here in the Schmodown. So many great memories to be part of y'all's lives in the way that I have been. It means the world to me, and I appreciate you letting me do that as the outlaw. I appreciate you following me. appreciate you supporting me. All of you who join the Outlaw Nation, all of you in the Outlaw Nation Patreon, especially the ones who've been here from the beginning of that Patreon, seen it grow, seen it kind of morph into what it's morphed into, which is an awesome place to be with the Discord there, fun times, the Outlaw Nation Trivia League uh, that is a part of that as well. Everything we build there in the uh, Patreon. It's been an honor to be a part of that and to lead that. I appreciate it madly, all of you. And if you're not part of the Patreon, you need to be. This is a lot of fun. We have a great time talking about all kinds of things. Uh, we do get into the Schmodown. We do get into life and entertainment, the whole nine, everything there, wrestling, sports, whatever you got. Uh, it's patreon.com slash John Roca. See all the tiers that you can sign up for. And the tiers are going to be changing here in a positive way coming up in October uh, and you'll see the announcements soon for that as well. Uh, and there's so much going on um, in, in the uh, Outlaw Nation Patreon as well that you can be a part of. Hangouts, watch-alongs. Uh, there, the Discord is always hopping with people hanging out with each other, talking, staying up late, watching movies. It's the best. So there you go. And if you want to follow me on Twitch, uh, The Outlaw Nation, all one word, on Twitch, The Outlaw Nation, all one word, follow me there. Of course, follow me at The Roca Says on Twitter and on Instagram. You know I'm going to have some things to say to Christian Harloff after this is over. And uh, do me a favor as well. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, subscribe to the channel down below. Hit that like button and hit that bell button. This lets you know what we got going on. Let you know when we're dropping all the new content we do here. And leave a comment down below as well. Keep it respectful. I will fucking delete your comment if you're disrespectful. Keep it respectful. But, come and, uh, but leave a comment. Likes and comments all elevate 
the visibility of the outlaw nation and everything we got going on here. Thanks to Sean Barreto helping me produce tonight. Appreciate it madly, my man. Much love and respect. Thank you for skipping the Yankees game to hang out with me tonight. Uh, I'm, it means the world to me. Oh, we got one last donation here from Logan Burton. Logan, thank you, Logan. Jesus, that's very kind of you. He said, I just wanted to leave a last minute donation. I should be doing schoolwork. Schoolwork. I should be doing schoolwork, but watching the outlaw school others is great. <laughs> thank you very much, Logan. Thank you very much, Logan. But stay in school. Stay in school, Logan. Get your degree. I, I didn't do an interview with you for nothing. So get your degree, graduate from there, and go and go and change the world in some positive way. Go and change one person's life in some positive way. So thank you, Logan. Very kind of you. Um, one last thing to say to you all. I say this at the end of every one of these shows. And even as the outlaw, I mean it even more so. Whatever you need to do to get through the next second, next minute, next hour, next day, next week, next month, next year, I want you to do it. You never know what's waiting for you on the other side. It could surprise you and shock you how different your world might be if you find that strength to just put that one foot forward, half a foot, a quarter of a foot, a toe, whatever it is that helps you keep moving forward. You never know what's waiting for you on the other side. Lord knows I didn't know in 2016 when I almost took my life and found my way back out of the hole. It took months to climb out of it. But look how my life has changed since then. Look at the legacy that I've been able to leave in the game. And look at the incredible woman I've got riding by my side in the Lady Owl. And the channel and all of you being a part of it. I had no idea that this was waiting for me on the other side. And none of you know what's waiting for you on the other side. If you just keep going, even when it gets real, real tough to be able to do so. I'm with you. I support you. I'm behind you 100%. And I want you to do that because I want you to be part of our outlaw nation as we build it, as we grow it, as it gets bigger and bigger. We crossed 18,100 the other day. Let's keep marching to 19,000, to 20,000, 25, 30, 50, 100,000. Let's do it. That's what we're built to do here. So come aboard and stay aboard. And stay with us because we love you. All right. And the outlaw loves you madly. And John Roker loves you too. But the outlaw loves you madly. Thanks again. <sighs> Retiring. It's happening. It's finally time. But it's going out on my terms. On my fucking terms. All right. Much love to you guys. Take care of yourselves. Be well. And I'll talk to you next time with another brand new episode of the Outlaw Nation show next week here on the Outlaw Nation channel. Peace and love. Thank you.